Premier League radio in a Premier League city. Yes, welcome to the podcast. My name's Andrew Smith. Welcome along to more Whitby Town chat. And I'm very pleased to say that I've got our newest signing, Dave McTiernan. Yes, he's back at the club and he's on the line now. Dave, how are you doing? Hello, Andrew. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Nice to have you with us and nice to have you back at the club. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah, um, of course, uh, you've, you've been away a few years. Just uh, just, just tell us uh, what you've been doing in, in between uh, your, your last stint at Whitby and your return. Um, like I said, I left under Lee Nogan um, and signed for Newcastle Blue Star. Um, I took the opportunity there to um, you know play football and and get uh, get myself on, back on track as I wasn't playing under Lee Nogan as much as I wanted to. Um, I had two successful seasons there. Um, as you know, the um, the the folded, um, and then I went on to uh, join Harrogate Town in the Conference North and had a, a stop star season. But yeah, enjoyed it. Too, but um, glad to be back now. Excellent stuff, Macker. Uh, I think it was while you were at Blue Star, wasn't it? That uh, you you broke a certain goal scoring record. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it was two fastest goals from kick off. Me and um, Lee Novak, um, who's currently at Huddersfield now. Um, he, we kicked off, he scored, and then we won the kick off, and then I scored um, the second goal that apparently broke records, which you know is still up in the air. Mate. Excellent, it's uh, still up in the air, is it? Yeah, I mean, people say it's in Guinness Book of Records, but I haven't really, um, I haven't really had anything more from it to be honest. Um, I mean, uh, did you did your previous stint here? Uh, you know, did did that make the decision for you and 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 you knowing uh, Harry Dunn as well? I mean, did that make it easier for you to return to the Turnbull? Yeah, I mean, like I said, summer was a bit of a, um, you know, it was, I had to make the right decision for myself in terms of football. Um, there was obviously a couple of clubs interested, higher and lower. Um, but the, the fact was that um, I really enjoyed myself last time with being, you know, the club was doing brilliant with me. And, you know, I, I was just looking forward to getting the return. And the fact that Harry was there and, and the signings, like you said, Darren Connick was a close mate of mine and one or two other lads in the squad um, with the fact that, that you know I want to come back and enjoy my football uh, and we're gonna, we always like to uh, test the knowledge uh, of the players and staff at Whitby right. Town so uh, how, how is your trivia generally Macca what are you like at it useless <laughs> <laughs> okay well uh, we've uh, we've already spoken to uh, to, to Darren Craddock and uh, and Jimmy Beadle uh, yeah. and they got five and six respectively on this on these same questions uh, so, so you know, about middling. So, so you, you've got a chance um, to uh, to supersede them and get get the dressing room bragging rights as well, which is <laughs> is always important, even before a ball's kicked. Um, uh, okay, so uh, are you ready to uh, tackle the teaser? Well, let's all go then, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. A bit of confidence. All right, Micah. Question number one: uh, Back in 1994-95, which Manchester City goalkeeper was ever present for the Sky Blue Club? Uh, 1994. This is a tough one, Micah, and uh, both uh, both Jimmy and Darren struggle with this one. Um, so I say Nicky Weaver. Nicky Weaver. Now that's not a bad guess, but I'm afraid it's not right. <laughs> It is the wrong answer, Maki. Yes, uh, Aiki Immel. Oh, Aiki Immel. Uh, believe the German, a German goalkeeper there. Uh, yes, ever present for Manchester City in 1994 to 95. But never mind. Easier than this. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's some easier, there's some tougher. But there you go. You, you, you'll soon find out. Number two. In which decade did Cardiff City win the FA Cup? Again, I think this is this is going to be a little bit of guesswork. I think involved. Yeah, here. definitely. Sixties. You going for the nineteen sixties, Macca? Yep. I'm afraid not. Even further back than that, the nineteen twenties. Oh. Way back, way back. Uh, one of one of the lads got that one right. One of them didn't. Oh, he, he probably's on the computer. <laughs> probably got uh, Wikipedia up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we'll go to number three, Macca. You're, you're still in this one, don't we? Eddie Large, one half of Little and Large, uh, was on trial at which football league club? Um, Bristol City. Bristol City. Well, it's a city. It was at Manchester City. Right, okay. 
Uh, of course, I guess if you knew, if I think it would be an advantage to be a little older, Macabus. Do you, do you know who Eddie Large is? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might be the case. 80s comedian, Eddie Large, quite a big bloke. Uh, and a big Manchester City fan, you see. Uh, I think if you knew that, you would have been halfway there. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> Okay, number four. Brian Robson was at which club when he made his England debut? Uh, Manchester United. Going for Manchester United. <laughs> Fred, not Macca. It was the club before. It was West Bromwich Albion. Uh, of course, uh, a, a club he went on to manage as well as Millsborough. Oh, okay. Uh, moving on to question five. Which goalkeeper was ever present for Norwich City also in 1994-95? Yeah, I'm back in picture him. I just can't see his name. Um, I can't think. You just have to pass that one and picture him. But... Oh, really? He actually went on to management as well, uh, Maka, quite recently. Uh, Brian Good. There you go, you're off the mark, yes, Brian Gunn. Uh, not doing quite so well when he uh, took over as manager there, but uh, <laughs> anyway, the less, the less said about that, the better. <laughs> Question six. San Marino scored a goal in nine seconds against which team in 1993? San Marino. Um, Italy. You going Italy? Italy. It was England. Oh, I knew it was England. I should have said that. It was that famous qualifier. England went on to win yeah. 7-1, but uh, yeah. they didn't manage to get themselves into the 94 World Cup. It's all coming back now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, when the pressure's on, you see, it's a difficult It's a different Yeah, exactly. Matter. There you go. Uh, number seven. Who moved from Chelsea to Tottenham Hotspur for £2.2 2 million in 1991, and he took the highest fee Ever received uh, for a Chelsea player at that time? Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea to Tottenham. Chelsea to Tottenham for for two point two million in nineteen ninety one. And I'll tell you now, it was a Scotsman, like it. I think Gavin Peacock for some reason, but I don't. I know he hasn't even played for Spurs. Yeah, he did play for Chelsea, but no, did he play for uh, Spurs? I haven't got a clue. No idea at all. No. It was Gordon Jury. Gordon Jury. Gordon Jury, there you go. Rangers though, wasn't he? Uh, he was at Rangers as well later on, I believe, in his career, yes. But it was Chelsea to Tottenham, 2.2 million in 1991. At that time, the highest fee ever received for a player uh, from Chelsea. Probably beaten that quite a bit since then. Right. <laughs> Number eight, which club was known as Abbey United? Abbey United? Hmm. If you know your if you know your ground names, your stadium names, uh, this one would be Cambridge, a bit easier. Maybe. Going for Cambridge. <laughs> there you go. Yes, Cambridge United, of course, play at the Abbey Stadium. Yes, they were once known as Abbey United. Number nine, Peter Davenport and Gary Pallister played at which club at the same time? Middlesbrough. He's saying Middlesbrough, and not far yeah. from you, Macca. There you go, yes. Uh, you'd have got some stick if you'd have got that flying one. Flying now. I'm flying. <laughs> He's on a roll. Uh, it's a shame it doesn't go to 15, really. <laughs> uh, question 10, and this is a tough one, I have to warn you. Which Mel became boss of Manchester City in 1987? Mel, I think it was Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a hell of a signing. Um, I'm, I'm, can, we, can I have a clue? <laughs> uh, his, his surname begins with an M Oh, brilliant um, <laughs> Mel, Mel Mitchell <laughs> Ah, not too far off Mel Mackin Mel Mackin, yeah so it, it was one of those that uh, you either know it or you don't I think that's yeah. a bit of a tough one Unfortunately, it's For you there, Macca But uh, yes, uh, you got a, you got a couple there at the end um, You got three, in fact oh, There you go yeah, bottom, bottom at the moment, Macca, but there's still plenty of time. There's oh, still plenty of time. Definitely. You caught me off guard, that's all. Well, uh, thank you very much for talking to us. No problem. Brilliant stuff. Dave McTain in there, uh, the newest signing for Whitby Town. Premier League Radio in a Premier League city. Sunderland.